Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel and I hope you've had the most fabulous week. In today's video I'm going to be making an outfit inspired by my most favourite film star of absolutely all time, Hedy Lamarr. How very dare they start driving past my house when I'm just starting to film. Don't they know what goes on here? If you've spent any time with me in my little cottage by the sea, you will know that Hedy Lamarr is a film star that I'm absolutely obsessed with. And this week is a very special week because it was her birthday the other day. Unfortunately, she's not here to celebrate it. But also at this time of year, it's the anniversary of my granddad's passing. And my granddad, along with my lovely Nan, brought me up. I lived with them growing up. And he was a huge influence on me. He was an engineer in the war, Second World War. And he loved Hedy Lamarr. And we used to watch all the old films. And Hedy Lamarr was his particular favorite because he always said that she was an inventor and she was so clever and he loved her brain and even though he was very very much in love with my nan and she was the love of his life i think there was a very very special place in his heart for the wonderful hedy so in honor of both hedy lamar and her magnificence and also my granddad for introducing me to such an incredible woman i decided to make an outfit inspired by her she's incredibly stylish I have a whole Pinterest board all about her so I will link that below and you can go and have a look and if you've never seen the documentary Bombshell which I'll also link below all about her and her incredible life then you should really check it out. I'll be using the Bella tea dress pattern by Liberty London to make my Hedy Lamarr inspired outfit. I'll be making a longer sleeve version however and using this lovely pink drapey jacquard from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. I really love this pattern, I've used it a few times and I'll be making a faux fur cape to match. And here's the sleeve actually fully drafted out. I've decided to put a point on it which should go over the top of my hand and it's the buttons are going to run along here and I've done like a cuff facing to neaten that. I want it to be a very sort of narrow slim fit sleeve. Um, we shall see what it looks like. It's a very dark grey dismal day. Perfect November day. Cut out the shrug out of this amazing faux fur that was actually cut out to be a coat and the I'd already used what was left over from that for my bride a few weeks ago and so I've done this and it's like you know there's been a massacre in here it's like if you do anything with faux fur or squeak wins you will just have carnage so um yeah it's all up my nose and all in everything but this is all cut out and then my dress is cut out so the first thing that I do is I, when I'm producing anything, is I pin everything that needs pinning in the first place. So all the darts, any seams that can go together, everything's pinned and then I will sew all of those pieces and then finish the seams, do the next lot of pinning and so on. I'm going to get pinning and um, yeah, then it's sewing, the fun part. The next thing that I need to do is to sew on this facing. They're calling it a facing because there's a slit just here between um, at the centre front and this is the facing. So I've cut that out and I've traced through the stitching lines with a dressmaker's pencil. And you're supposed to use interfacing on this, but I just don't like the way it's going to make the fabric go quite cardboardy. And I use an, a, like a trico iron-on interfacing, which really is is meant for um, like knit fabrics and jerseys. And it 
works quite well on some woven fabrics but I don't have any here so I am um, yeah I'm just going to press open press over the edges before I sew this on so this will go on here like so and then I'll zoom so zoom so and then snip down into this point and then press through and then top stitch that in place and here I am actually doing the zoom so zoom so you sew down to the point and pivot and then sew back up the other side the facing is sewn on and I have snipped down into that point and then this gets turned through and pressed and top stitched however I don't have a thread that matches this exactly I'm using just a, a creamy ivory on the inside so I'm going to have to pop to the shop and get some in the meantime I get on with sewing the faux fur shrug and dealing with all the molting if you could see the the actual full result of working with this faux fur it's like I've massacred a gazillion faux minks and their fur is just literally covering everything including this camera but it's not really picking it up but anyway I digress I've sewn the lining together this isn't great lining I just couldn't find um, any other lining I think when you see lining really nice good quality silky lining it's worth picking it up just in case because whenever I come to look for lining that I really like I can't find it but I am going to be inserting the lining into the outer fabric using a method called bagging out it's how you make you know put lining into jackets etc so I've left a little opening there in the side seam and then I'm going to pin it all the way around to the the molting faux fur and then pull it all through so I've sewn the lining to the faux fur and it's all the fur is now inside and uh, I just got to find the opening and then through here possibly should have left that a little bit bigger but I'm gonna pull through the um, the cape here's where we are the whole cape has been turned through and I'm going to hand stitch all the way around just to hold the lining and I've got a, a little um, fabric covered clasp to go on here but with a lovely shiny brooch and uh, yeah it's just basically there I'm so chuffed once I had the correct colour thread I got on with sewing the dress the instructions for this pattern are really straightforward so I just followed those and I'm overlooking all the seams inside rather than doing a, an age appropriate finish I've pressed the um I keep calling it a placket but in the pattern it's called a facing so what you have to do is flip this all through and it's quite tricky to get that point to sit as a very neat and nice point. Once this is pressed it will be neat enough. So I'm going to press this again and then pin it and top stitch it in place. I just thought I would share a little tip, one of Tara's tips with you. And this is about setting in sleeves. Now, I, on the whole, always set sleeves in flat. Um, this is the front and the back, the shoulder seam here. I don't sew up the side seams and then sew up the sleeve seam and then put sleeves in in the round. 
there are exceptions to that because sometimes just because of the logistics of the thing that you're sewing you have to or if you've got a two-piece sleeve block and a lot of tailoring you kind of have to set your sleeves in in that more traditional way but this method of production I was taught at university and um, it works just about every time nearly every time um, whereas I just find that sewing in a sleeve in the round is you know just can be faffy and there's more more things can go wrong um, and I've just got so used to doing it this way so I do that but also because you have ease in the sleeve to create that nice roll over the shoulder to allow your sleeve to fit over the top of your arm and so on you um have to get that ease into the sleeve head and the way that I do this is I always run a um couple of rows of um bigger stitches the same as if you were going to gather something and when I pin in I pull those up just enough not to create a gather but to um, just make sure that the fabric, the ease, actually fits into the sleeve head in a really nice, smooth way so that you get a really lovely finished sleeve. So I'm going to pin that in and then show you what it looks like. So I've pinned up to where the easing starts there. And then on the other side, I've pinned to where the easing starts there. And you can see when I squish those together that this here is the ease that needs to go into the sleeve head. So if you pull some of the, the, the gathering, so we're not gathering here as such. Um, we're just sort of getting the ease into place so gather gather pull up the stitches pull up the stitches and then voila so that's sort of a little bit too much so you can just sort of un undo the ease and I know the the center notch point to match the the shoulder seam is in between these two shoulder darts and that's what gives you that lovely vintage shoulder shape on this dress that I think is a real winner I was really skeptical about it before I actually sewed it but I I really love it now and then just pin that all in place. So much easier than faffing with things in the round. Uh, I mean, I have said before that I do as much of my sewing flat as possible. So that's putting in zips or um, before I sew the back to the front and so on. And there we are. That is now in there. So it's going to look something like that no tucks all all very neat and lovely so I'm going to go and sew that the sleeves are in the skirt is attached to the bodice this is a a rather small Mildred I'm not this size um, I have just tried it on and the sleeves are rather tight so just to do as I say not as I do reminder when you do modify pattern pieces, it's really worth cutting them out in some scrap fabric and just trying them on before you sew them in the main fabric. Luckily, it it's not so detrimental that um, I can't actually wear the dress, but it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do some weight loss on my arms to make this truly comfortable, which, let's be honest, is not really gonna happen. You can actually make this dress without a collar and with a tie neckline but I really love the collar on this dress I think it really adds something 
and then it is making the rouleau loops and buttons for the cuff details. I haven't gone into too much detail here, but if you'd like a proper tutorial, just pop your thoughts in the comments below and I shall see what I can do. I have made so many rouleau loops and buttons in my time. I don't know why I am actually forcing myself to do it for this dress, but it is a really lovely, very vintagey looking detail. And I have this great gizmo that I bought to help me in my rouleau making. Very nearly done now. I've just got the cuffs to do, some hand sewing, and do the buttons. One thing I should look at actually is the collar pattern. It says cut it on the with the centre back on the fold twice. But actually, and I should have sort of thought of that really because this is the third time I've made this dress. I actually think that the under collar should really be cut on the crosswise of the fabric, across the grain using the bias to stop this sort of pulling that's happened on every single collar I've done, but a bit of steam hopefully will get that out. Um, but here is the Hedy Lamar inspired outfit so far. I've finished everything on the machine so I do need to do a bit of pressing but I'm going to put a little hook and eye here I ended up putting an invisible zip in rather than a center lap zip because I didn't have a normal zip I only had the invisible so that's in there and here's the rouleau loops and there's a, a, a cuff lining so there's lots of like just some hand stitching of that hope you've enjoyed today's video and sewing a 1930s ish outfit inspired by the beautiful Hedy Lamarr. If you haven't seen her films or you don't know much about her do do some research look into her she really is incredible and your life will be better for it. As always thank you for taking the time to spend the time with me and share my sewing adventures. If you haven't already subscribed and you've enjoyed today which I really hope you have then click the subscribe, press like, share with your friends, let people know. It means the world to me that you take the time to spend the time with me in my little cottage by the sea and Remember, we can make the world a better place one stitch at a time, whether we're copying our favourite film stars or just making some lovely things for people. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're keeping safe and well, my lovelies, and do check back next week because I have very, very big news. I shall see you then. Have a fabulous week. Bye.